you split the sea so I could walk right through it. My fears were drowned in perfect love. You rescued me and I was standing. Praise the name of Lord Jesus Christ. The day is a great day for you to be alive and a great day for you to get up and get into the house of God. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes. We're going to take you to a live service, some good preaching, and with a testimony of what God has done right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. Be back right after this. You don't want to miss Wednesday night, every Wednesday night at 7.30 in the Word with Pastor Steve. On Wednesday night, I have more time to slow down and to minister with the Word of God to you. You just need to be here. Also, we pray for the sick. Great things happen every Wednesday night. I'll see you in the Word with Pastor Steve on Wednesday night. You don't want to miss Friday morning miracle service. I will be praying for your family. I will be praying for sickness. Do you need a miracle in your life? Be with us Friday morning at 1030 every Friday morning. God shows up in a great way. We'll see you here Friday morning for your miracle. Don't miss every Friday morning. Friday mornings is an awesome time. I love the Friday morning miracle service. I love the Wednesday night service. I love the Sunday night service at 6 p.m. This morning at 11 a.m. It's going to be awesome. So many miracles take place right here at the Paxton Revival Center Church. I'm going to take you directly into a live service to a miracle that God has already done, giving God all the glory at this time. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, where you're hurting, your left arm, heal it. Healing in Jesus' name. By the stripes of Christ, I speak healing. Lord, what you've done for my other daughter, you're going to do it for this daughter. Lord, I take away, first of all, I take away that stress. Father, I, I, I take away that fear of what the devil says it's leading up to. Devil, you're a liar. I speak healing in every muscle in Jesus' name. I want you to hold that arm up. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Where's that pain at? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, church. Come on, church. Oh, la, 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 ma, 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 ma. Come on, church. Oh, I think that tells us where the pain is. Hallelujah, in Jesus' name. All that is one of the thousands of people that's been touched, healed by the power of God right here, Paxton Revival Center Church. Do you need something from God? Today is the day which is the day for your miracle. Today, get here. God is restored in families. People are being delivered. Great things are happening right here at the Paxson Revival Center Church. If you'd like to have a word from Pastor Steve every day on Facebook, I don't do birthdays and don't do the drama. And I, don't, I don't get in the middle of all of the, all the debates and stuff, but I love to preach the word of God. So make sure you go to uh, you go Facebook and type in Pastor Steve Dobbs, and I'll give you a word from heaven every day. God is doing great things. Paxton Revival Center Church. I'm just telling you, these are the days of revival, and God is up to something. We need to be praying for our nation. Our nation is in the need of prayer. So many things are happening. It's trying to divide it, but thank God. If God said, as my people would pray, he said, I would heal the land. So I, I ask you to pray for America. You pray for our leaders that, you know, that God would that God would strengthen. And God, and he commands us to pray for our leaders. Into the preaching of God's word at this time. You know, that God began to speak something to me and I began to hear from the voice of God. Hallelujah. Because I started something on Friday morning in Exodus chapter 33 and verse 18. Actually 17 I want to get started. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing that thou hast spoken. For thou found grace in my sight. And I know thee by thy name. And he said, I beseech thee, show me your glory. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. I want you to get that in your spirit. Lord, show me the glory. And then he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious whom I be gracious. I will show mercy whom I will show mercy. And he said, Thou cannot see my face, there shall no man see me, see me and live. And the Lord said, Behold, there is a place by me. Stand upon this rock, and, and it shall come to pass, while my glory pass by. While my glory pass by, that I will put thee in a cliff of the rock, 
and will cover thee with my hand while I pass by. And I will make, and I will take away my hand, thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall you not see. He was saying, I want to see your glory. You may be seated. We understand today that we want to see the glory of God. The way we see the glory of God is by being in the presence of God. You can't be away from him and receive the glory of God and not be walking by him and with him. We understand that today and over the history of life and I know uh, which, uh, which of church, I know that you know, me and Brother Griff was speaking earlier about all the revivals that we have seen and the great moves of God that we've seen in the past. And, and, and we've seen some of the greatest uh, uh, miracles in my life. I, I've seen God raise the dead. I've seen blinded eyes open, deaf ears unstopped. I've seen lame get up and walk. And in, in this church, this church is a miracle church. We see constantly people healed of cancer. And as we heard this morning where people, uh, 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 you know, your sister, you healed of cancer this morning, daughter. Amen. Sitting right on the back row, so on my second row right here, my daughter healed by cancer, just recently been healed by cancer. So when we begin to look around, and you know, this church is filled with people, people begin to say, well, Pastor, it seems like everybody in your church has been healed of something. Why? Because we're a church that believes in praying for the sick. We believe in God raising up those that are down and out. But what is happening over the, you know, the time? What is taking place in our generation that so many people, they want to see the glory of God, but they don't want to remain where he is. He said, there's a place by me. If you're going to see the glory of God, if you're going to live in the glory of God, you got to live in the place by him. He said, I will cover up so that whenever I pass by, I come by today to tell you that God wants his glory to be upon us. He wants us to live in the glory cloud. He wants us to live around this presence, but his presence is where it's at. Oh, I know that we can't go to work and holy, holy Lord. No, we still have a job to do in our life, but we need to have a relationship with Jesus Christ that we walk and talk within the glory cloud. We begin to know where he's at. Go with me to the uh, first Corinthians chapter 15 and verse number one, because there's something that I want to throw to you this morning that I want to cause you you to stop and think just a little bit at the times that we're living in how do you and your people want to uh, you say that the power of God is no longer here but I come to prophesy to you today that it's greater today than it was before you say how can it be greater today than it was before because before you know, you know, the generations before us did not have to fight the battles that we're having to fight today the demons are bigger today than they used to be the devils are, 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 are you know, the devils are larger than they used to be Paul begin to say in Corinthians 15 and 1 more brother I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you which you have received and therefore ye stand that by which you are saved if you keep in memory we have to keep it in our mind keep it in our heart what I preached unto you unless you have believed in vain for I delivered unto you first of all that which I have received how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and rose again on the third day according to the scriptures and, and, uh, and verse number six and, he, and it says and he was seen of 500 brethren at once 500 people at once 500 people you know, that was seeing Jesus after he was risen from the dead. I want somebody to say 500. Now, in the book of Acts, now, see, this is, uh, you, know, the, you know, the Paul talking about what is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John when Jesus was raised from the dead, that, you know, there was 500 people that saw him. But just one book later in the book of Acts, chapter 1 and verse 15, and in these days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples, which were numbered together, and they were about 120. Now, and the Bible said in Acts 2 and 1, they were all in place in one accord, and suddenly uh, a sound from heaven, and it come and it filled the house that were sitting in here, and they appeared in their cloven dungs like a fire, and it set upon them, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, and they was begin to speak with a, 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 which, a, a which another a, a, which another language. So here they were in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John when Jesus was risen from the dead, that they were 500. Some may say 500. Now, just a few days later, a possibility only 50 days later, 50 days later, they got to church together. Now, how many were they before? 
500. Now how many are they in the book of Acts? 120. What happened to the other 380 just within those 50 days? Within those 50 days, how did things begin to change in their mind? And they forgot what took place at, uh, at Calvary. They forgot of the manifestation of the power of God. There were 380 that was no longer running together. 380, uh, no doubt in their life, began to have doubt. I mean, because I really believe without a, a, a doubt in my mind that we're living in the end days, in the end time. Hallelujah. So therefore, uh, over the 50 years of ministry here at the Pax Re Bible Center Church. We've seen the glory of God. We still remain seeing the glory of God. But what is happening to the way that people are running? I'm going to deal with that just a little bit this morning. And the title of my sermon is this morning, it's Don't Miss the Glory. Don't miss the glory because what is uh, is is end up happened? It started out 500 when Jesus had risen from the dead, and, and, and there was 500. And yet they, he told them, "Go." And he told them all the same promise: "Go to Jerusalem and be endued with power from on high." But only 120 got there. They missed the glory. So what was the reason that some of them and you begin to miss the glory? I doubt some of them might have been doubting and say, "Well, maybe, maybe that was." not for us and maybe it's not for us and I don't have to do anything about it and, and the great deceiver that the devil is let doubt get in your mind and, and doubt begin to say you know you can never be healed and you can never be delivered and your children never be saved and, and doubt begin to come into your mind and so there you know the doubters and the skeptics and, and the reasoners and the questioners begin to say you know there's no, no need in us doing that today you know that is old time religion that's the way they used to go. See, they used to have a time that how do we remain in, in the presence of God. How do, I, I was talking with Brother Griff this morning, and, and, and we were talking about how people used to remain in the presence of God. How do we begin to see uh, uh, powers of movement of God, and we begin to see God do great things. We went to church six nights a week, seven nights a week, three or four times during the warning time, and all we ever done was just church, 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 church. What was it? We had that place right beside him we remain in the place beside God we remain in the place of worship we remain in the place of of honor and respecting him but now we got to the place how it could have been part of the 380 says that didn't show up on the day of Pentecost that I'm just too busy have you heard it I'm just too busy I, I don't have time to get up in that upper room you know it's crowded up in that upper room and it's probably going to be hot up in the other room and you know some folks over there you know uh, well you know that girl down the street I don't even like her so I'm not going to go up in the same room where she's at and so she missed the glory I don't know all the reasons why the 380 missed the glory uh, how did, because they begin to do something they were so busy to go get the promise but he told them go and get power Go in the upper room and get power. Go in the upper room. I want to do great things. Maybe it could have been some of them have the lack of concern. I'm just not concerned about it anymore. I, I don't really need that power. I, I really don't need all that. And maybe Jesus didn't really mean what he said that we would be endued with power from on high. Maybe it's just not that anymore that maybe we don't, don't need the Holy Ghost. But what was it they missed with the Holy Ghost? What, what was it they missed in the, in the upper room with 120? They missed the outpouring of the Holy Ghost. They missed the mighty rushing wind. They missed the, the speaking in the uh, with, with unknown tongue. They missed the enduring with power from on high. And they missed the, you know, the unity and the purpose together. What has happened to the church today? The devil wants to steal our power so therefore he tells us it's not for us today oh could I present to you today that maybe God has not moved away maybe we moved away maybe maybe there's nothing wrong with the power of God in the church today but it's us we moved away because we don't need that uh, you know, being beside him anymore can you remember when you first got saved Oh, you would run down to the altar and you would pray and, and you would go home and you would pray and you would read your Bible. Hello, you would tell everybody where you are. You were so excited. But now we got trouble in our life and we begin to miss the glory of God. They miss the glory of God. Can I give you a few examples of folks that miss the glory of God? Can I tell you about a man? The Bible said he was the strongest man that ever lived. His name was Samson. Samson began to have 
all of the power of being a great deliverer. God was going to use him mightily. He was going to be greatly used by God. But he began to look next door. And his girlfriend named Delilah. Oh, he said, I sure like that God's creation of flesh next door. He began to see the temptation, and, and the temptation began to pull him over. And before long, he was laying his head in her lap, and he was losing the glory, the covering that was on his life. He missed the glory. Or could we talk about King Saul? King Saul had everything in his hands. But King Saul lost the glory. He missed the glory that could have been there. And then David, the little shepherd boy, says, I'm just willing to do whatever he wants me to do. I'm willing to be humble and I'm willing to, I'm willing to work in the back of the pasture. I'm willing to serve in the back of the pasture. I'm, I'm, really, I'm, I'm ready to be humble and humility and just, God, how can you use me? Use me any way that you want to use me. My, my brothers has abused me, but God, you can use me. My daddy told me to go home and I wasn't as good as my brother. So therefore, the, I have lost this, uh, uh, I've lost the image of who I am and, and, and I don't have no self respect because my daddy talked down to me but God if you can use anybody I want to see your glory and if you can use anybody God I want you to use me and, 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 and yes, so David began to gain that respect go with me to the book of John chapter 5 because here in the book of John we can see where a multitude of people they miss the glory of God oh we want the glory and I believe before this service is over with somebody going to get the glory back you're going to move back over here because over here next to God is where the glory is. Next to God that you can have that presence of God in your life so that you feel like, where are you, devil? I ain't running from you anymore. Where are you? Hear what it said in the book of John chapter 6 and verse 61. When Jesus knew in himself that his disciple mumbled against it, he says, what, does this offend you? What if you see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is a spirit that quicketh, the fresh proper, proper nothing. The words I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. But they were some of you that believed not, for Jesus knew from the beginning, those that, that believed not and, should not and that should betray him. And he said, therefore, if I say to you that no man come to me except it was given unto him by my Father. Verse 66, and they, in, in that time that many of the disciples went back and walked no more with him. Now they begin to say in their life that they walked back. And the Bible says, Jesus said to this 12, are you going to leave also? Are you going to leave? And the next verse they says, where else do we have to go? You're the only one that can give us eternal life. We don't have nobody else from you. So Jesus began to say in verse 69, and we believe and are sure thou art the son of Christ, the son of God. So he asked the question, how and where can we get this? Many of them begin to leave the multitude. Even the disciples had turned back. We have seen, you know, they were there with them. You have seen turn the water and the wine and multiply the bread and raise the dead and, and would you do great and mighty things. But when Jesus started talking about, you're going to have to walk by faith by your yourself you're going to have to walk this journey by yourself now they begin to say i don't want to walk this journey by myself i, I don't want to walk this journey of, of, of the process of faith by myself i don't want to do this by myself i can't do it by myself so therefore i'm going to turn around and the bible said many of them left and begin to go back doing what they used to do what did they do they lost the glory they missed the glory see the glory it's not the goosebumps let me get it straight right now the glory is not the shaking. The glory is not you laying on the floor. But the glory is the presence of God that is in your life. And when you get the presence of God in your life, that's the real glory. The real glory is not, oh, we begin to say we had a glorious service. I understand what you mean. But the glory is when you stand beside the Heavenly Father. The glory is when you stand in His presence. The glory, how is the word glory means something heavy. 
uh, something that weighty, uh, something that, uh, that weighs a whole lot. Uh, I want to stand in the presence of God because I found out if I stay in the presence of God that when the enemy comes up, I got somebody to help me fight. Uh, I'm not trying to fight this battle by myself. I need the glory of God on my life. Second Timothy first, chapter 10 and verse 10. But Demas had left forsaken me. Heaven love this present world. See, folks begin to look at the world, and I love the world more than I love the place beside God. He said, I believe in the fellowship of Paul, doing the ministry of Paul. Heaven love the present world, and he missed the glory. Now, if you, uh, I'm not going to have time to preach it, but I want you to just you take a middle note of it in the book of Revelation chapter 2 and 3. The churches, the first church of Ephesus lost its first love. See, I knew it wasn't going to be a shout in the sermon this morning. I knew that whenever we start talking about some begin to have to focus on where you're standing in Christ. Where are you standing in Jesus Christ? And in the book of Ephesians, or which in the book of Revelation 2 and 1, it says the church of Ephesus lost their first love. You know, chapter 2, of verse 12, you know, you know, the church is compromised to the world. How they, you know, chapter 2 and 18 through 29, you know, they got into spiritual adultery. Uh, the church, in, in which in chapter 3 of Sardis, neglected the defilement with the world. And the Bible said, and the Leah's seen in church, the lukewarm church. So what has happened today? People are losing the glory of God. Why? They no longer stand in relationship as you used to stand when you first got saved. I remember last night that, uh, that I think, yeah, the pops, uh, the pops and which and his lovely girl got married last night and you're talking about two people in love I'm telling you I don't know if Pop is looking at this man I mean that guy is in love with that girl he's in love why because he found somebody that made him complete in his life see when if you don't find Jesus Christ really and you're really not saying I'm going to sell out see this is not a Sunday morning thing this is not a club that you can attend whenever you want to attend. It's not a place that I could just go and play tag. It's not a place of a membership that I just send my dues in. I just make everything right. Oh, there's, I'm going to make a bold statement right here. Hell is going to be filled with people that paid their tithe. Ye must be born again. You must be born again. If you're going to have, oh, I know I should have preached something else this morning. Hallelujah. But I, I, I just come by and say, don't miss the glory. See, there's something that God's got for you. That's why the devil has been fighting you so hard. Because the devil knows if you ever get there, your family is going to come with you. The devil knows your relationship's going to come with you. The devil knows you're going to pull people out of hell. The devil knows if he can't stop, he better stop you now because you get into the place of this place in your life that I want to, Paul said in 2 Thessalonians 2 and 15, therefore he said unto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory. God said, I called you to obtain the glory. I want you to have the glory of Jesus Christ. The glory of Jesus Christ is whenever you look like him. And I don't mean a dress appearance, but I mean the glory that you have the glory of God. Not the way your hair is fixed and how are you? not about your clothes doctrine, but when you have the glory of God. The glory of God is whenever they're crucifying you and they're talking about a battle about you. Huh? That you can be like Jesus Christ huh? and say, do all you want to do. Huh? You can take my life, but you can't take my glory. Huh? You can mess with my body, but you cannot have my glory. Huh? You cannot have... Who I am. You can take my cars. You can take my shoes. You can take my everything I got. My daddy used to say, take everything I got, but leave my anointing alone. I got to have my anointing if I'm going to break the yoke in my life. 1 Peter 5 and 10. But the God of all grace who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that you have suffered for a while. Oh, we don't like that one. We want the glory of God without suffering. Make you perfect, 
This word perfect means mature. He said, I make you mature. I'm establishing you. I'm strengthening you. And I settled you. I settled you because you know who you are. See, if you don't know who you are, you'll never walk into the glory of God. The devil always want to mess with you, who you are. The devil want to remind you, and I appreciate the young girl getting up there. Don't you let the devil beat you up with your testimony you made today, girl. Don't you let the devil listen and talk to you and say, now everybody know who I am. That's the glory of God. It's to be able to stand up and say, this is who I was. But that old man's dead. That ain't me anymore. That is my past. I am a new creature in Christ Jesus. I've been born again and washed with the blood of Jesus Christ. Therefore, I'm working towards that place. He said, after you suffered for a while, after you've been made mature. See, you don't get perfect until you work on things a little bit. Let me turn this way so First Lady can't see me. See, whenever you walk in front of the mirror and you begin to put some makeup on, see us men, we don't understand that. She don't go in there, oh, I'm ready to go, Steve. Oh, no, no, no. She walks in and she lays the, I know I'm going to get beat up. You, you put a foundation on. Oh, I love preaching the word of God the way I'll be preaching this morning at 11 a.m. Make your plans to be with us. It's going to be an awesome time this morning. Early worship with Pastor Eddie at 10 a.m., 11 a.m. off the chain, and 6 p.m. revival service tonight. Why, wow, we're excited what God is doing. Just go to our webpage, PaxonRevivalCenter.com, find more information. Until we see in these great, excited Holy Ghost services today, may God bless you be our prayer.